Looking at the literature, you know, we see over the decades, you know, this shift from traditional UN peacekeeping to mm -hmm. sort of peace enforcement type um, uh, operations. Uh, what explains this shift? Okay, well, that's a good question. Um, the first point to start with is to say that peace operations have always developed as an ad hoc response to changing patterns of warfare all around the world, not just in Africa. So peace operations have always been a response to those different types of, of warfare. So if you see, for example, states fighting other states over territorial issues, for example, you tend to get peace operations that reflect that. You get more traditional missions that are about monitoring ceasefires, demilitarization zones. So in Africa, the UN mission between Ethiopia and Eritrea would be one example, or the monitoring mission in, in Western Sahara, uh, MINURSMO, to set up the, the mandate for a referendum on self-determination. So those were the types of um, peace operations that derived from and reflected interstate warfare over territorial issues. But the problem is that most of the conflicts in Africa obviously haven't been interstate. As a result, most conflicts in Africa that we've focused on, or at least the UN Security Council has focused on, have been more of the intra-state variety. It's been messy civil wars and more complicated types of conflict where you haven't got clear state belligerents fighting over clear territorial front lines, but it's much messier. You have one, two, or maybe many factions of, of rebels fighting government forces, paramilitaries might be involved and other things. So with those more messy um, civil wars, peace operations reflected that as well. So their mandates were primarily to help um, assist peace agreements and political settlements in those wars. And so the types of missions we saw then in the 1990s were more multidimensional operations that were trying to assist in the implementation of peace deals to end civil wars. And we saw many of those in West Africa in the 1990s, for example, in, in Sierra Leone, Liberia, and later Cote d'Ivoire. And then what made them sort of transition to more enforcement um, related and robust stabilization missions was that we increasingly gave peacekeepers mandates to use force beyond uh, issues of self-defense. So when we gave peacekeeping operations mandates to protect civilians and um, authorize them to use all necessary means to do that, they would increasingly have to confront spoiler groups or sometimes even government forces that were threatening civilians. Or if we were giving them mandates to protect humanitarian convoys and delivery um, routes, they might have to use force to stop spoiler groups from preventing that, or if we gave them mandates to forcibly disarm combatants in certain wars. So for all those reasons, peacekeepers have been given more and more um, mandated reasons to potentially use military force. And that's why we've seen a, a sort of broad shift in transition from these traditional monitoring and observation missions to this more robust form. Where we are currently is that the word stabilization has entered into the UN's peacekeeping vocabulary in a way that it hadn't really done before. So if you look in middle of 2010 in DR Congo, the, the MONU Commission changed its name to the Stabilization Mission in the Congo, MONUSCO. And we've seen now in the most recent UN missions in Mali and in Central African Republic, they're being explicitly um, labeled as stabilization operations. Now the problem here for the United Nations is that it's not really got a clear doctrinal answer to what stabilization missions mean and what they entail. But it's clear that at least one thing um, is obvious, is that stabilization means that UN peacekeeping operations are increasingly deploying into areas where there's no peace to keep. So that, that model of having a, a stable political settlement um, or ceasefire agreement before the arrival of a mission has now receded into the background in some of these more recent theaters. And so stabilization missions are about actually bringing stability to an area where there is ongoing warfare and conflict. And that's been particularly the case when the UN has been confronted by um, well, spoiler groups like the FDLR in the Congo, uh, or the MNLA, or Ansardine, um, or even AQIM in, in northern Mali. So really, in a nutshell, the transition of peace operations in Africa reflects the changing character of war. And that transition from sort of interstate conflict to traditional civil wars to this sort of new um, environment we're in where stability has become a key goal. Right. So it reflects the evolving uh, security uh, situation. Okay. Now, I wonder, um, what are the larger policy and operational um, implications uh, for this shift? 
I think there we can, we can probably say there's a few key questions that stand out. Um, first, I suppose, and the biggest question is really what do we mean by peace operations? Where does traditional peacekeeping start and stop and where does stability operations begin? And I think there's been a debate about how we define peace operations and in particular in Africa, the debate has revolved around, well, does peace operations include not only traditional peacekeeping tasks, but does it include things like counterinsurgency, for example? Does it include things like state building tasks and extending state authority across territory? Uh, does peace operations include civilian protection? And even in some cases, should peace operations include a, a counter-terrorism um, agenda? So I think the first policy issue is that it's forced us to debate more clearly and explicitly what do we mean by peace operations and how are they different from war fighting missions? And in the African context, I think we've seen, as you said before, a move towards a more robust sort of set of peace enforcement mechanisms and stabilization mechanisms that have embraced some elements of, of counterinsurgency thinking as well as civilian um, protection thinking. 